Hi everybody, my name is Brittany Noel Robles. I'm a second year um, obstetrics and gynecology resident, and today I'm here to talk to you about the rare syndrome of thrombocytopenia absent radius, also known as TAR syndrome, that was diagnosed prenatally in a female fetus. Thrombocytopenia absent radius, also known as TAR syndrome, is a rare congenital condition which presents with megakaryocytic thrombocytopenia and associated aplasia of the radius bone. Um, TAR syndrome typically presents with truncated upper extremities and a radial deviation of both hands due to the absence of the radius bone bilaterally, with bilateral thumbs usually present. Other abnormalities can occur and present in different organ systems, including the gastrointestinal system, skeletal muscles, hematologic system, and cardiac system. This is a case report of a 33-year-old G6P3023 with a last menstrual period of February 24th, 2019, um, who presented to our clinic after a positive home pregnancy test. Her beta HCG at that time was 4,088, and the sonogram had confirmed an intrauterine pregnancy at 12 weeks and zero days based on the crown rump length. The estimated due date was December 2nd, 2019, and the fetal heart rate was measured at 153 beats per minute, and the nuchal translucency was measured at 0.87 um, millimeters. The prenatal labs, as you can see from the slide, were unremarkable. I won't go through each of them, um, but everything was within normal limits. Um, these are images from the anatomy scan that we performed at our antepartum testing unit at 20 weeks and 3 days. Um, the fetus was found to be in breech presentation. Uh, the fetal heart rate was measured at 143 beats per minute. She had an anterior low-lying placenta. Um, the bipyramidal diameter was measured at 56th uh, percentile. The head circumference was in the 40th percentile. The abdominal circumference was found to be in the 32nd percentile. The femur length was in the 15th percentile. The humerus was in the 35th percentile. The um, ulnar bone was in the less than 5th percentile. The radius in the less than 5th percentile. And the estimated fetal weight was in the 35th percentile. Um, the patient did have an amniocentesis and microarray performed, um, which was 46XY um, and consistent with thrombocytopenia absent radius. Um, the patient and her partner were counseled on, um, on further management and she did decide uh, to proceed with um, the pregnancy. So we decided to perform a series of growth scans, the first one um, which was at 22 weeks and 3 days. Um, here the fetus is in the cephalic presentation with a fetal heart rate of 147 beats per minute um, and again with, you know, we see the anterior placenta. This is a growth scan at 27 weeks and 5 days of gestation. Um, again, we see the anterior placenta, the fetus was in the cephalic presentation, um, the fetal heart rate was 124 beats per minute. Uh, the bipyramidal diameter was in the 49th percentile, the head circumference was in the 19th uh, 0.5 percentile, abdominal circumference was in the 38th percentile, femur length was less than the 1st percentile, and the, the estimated fetal weight was in the 32nd percentile. Um, so here we see uh, truncated forearms and radial deviation um, of the hands bilaterally. This is another growth scan at, the, at 34 weeks and 5 days of gestation. Um, fetus was in the spout presentation. Fetal heart rate was 139 beats per minute. Um, you know, we see the anterior placenta clearly here. Um, again, the um, bipyramidal diameter was found to be in the 15th percentile. Head circumference was in the 8th percentile. Abdominal circumference was actually um, greater than 99th percentile. Femur length was less than the 1st percentile. And estimated fetal weight was in the 54th percentile. Um, and here we just see absent radius um, bilaterally. All right, so the patient was scheduled for primary low transverse cesarean section at 39 weeks um, due to the thrombocytopenia absent radius um, in the fetus. Um, she arrived to triage um, with spontaneous rupture of membranes, a clear fluid on November 16th, 2019 at 38 weeks and five days, um, and she was taken for primary low transverse cesarean section. The cesarean section was uncomplicated. Um, the pediatrics team was available. Um, the, neo the neonate delivered um, 
with Apgar said 9-9 in one of five minutes. Um, spontaneous cry was noted. Um, and the baby was brought to the NICU for further workup. Um, imaging was performed. The x-ray of the hands showed bilateral absence of the radial bone. The right hand was normal, but the left hand did have bra uh, brachydactyly. Uh, an echocardiogram was also performed, which was normal. Um, should a renal ultrasound performed, which was normal. And the lower extremities showed no abnormalities. Uh, her platelets did range from 80,000 to 130,000 during her admission. Um, she never required any transfusion of platelets or blood, um, and she was discharged home on day of life five in stable condition. Uh, so in conclusion, the most common and easily diagnosed abnormalities in patients with TAR syndrome um, are those relating to the appendicular skeleton, um, typically the upper or lower extremities. It's possible to correct both upper and lower limb defects with orthopedic interventions, um, usually early in life. After treatment, most patients can perform most activities of daily living with decreased range of motion, wrist extension, and ulnar deviation. Uh, some patients with thrombocytopenia absent radius may be candidates for prosthetic implants uh, later in life, um, so they would you know, follow up with orthopedics. Um, thank you so much for listening um, to my case report on thrombocytopenia absent radius that we diagnosed prenatally in a female fetus. I would be happy to take any questions via email. Um, my email is listed here. It's B-R-O-B-L-E-S at whitecoughhospital.org. Um, and thank you so much for your time.